We're going to do the presentation now. And uh, first, I'd like to introduce His Excellency Ira Ostash. Dr. Ostash was born in the Lviv uh, area of Ukraine. He's a 1985 graduate student at the Institute of Languages of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine. He went on to become the director of the International School of Ukrainian Studies of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine for six years. Ambassador Ostash speaks eight languages and is well known for his roles as vice president of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, the OSCE, at the Parliamentary Assembly, as well as the Ukrainian representative to the International Civil Aviation Organization. From 1994 to 2006, he was elected a member of parliament to Ukraine until his appointment as ambassador of Ukraine to Canada. Your Excellency. Thank you. Parliament and Senators, uh, Your Excellencies, Mesdames et Messieurs, Shalomni Pani Ivanova, it's a great honor uh, for us to celebrate in the Parliament of Canada the 300th anniversary of the first Ukrainian constitution of Belip Orlik that can be acknowledged as the first European constitution in a modern sense. This document is a great achievement of political, philosophical, and legal thought. And it was approved on April 5, 1710, at a Cossack assembly near the small town of Bandere. Now it's Moldova. The full title is Pacta e Concessiones Legum Libertatum Exercitus Zaporoviensis, Treaty on the Constitutional Rights and Freedoms of the uh, Zaporozhian Army. This document is known in juridical circles in old Ukrainian and Latin versions. Being written by the Republic, one of the Ukrainian headmans. It uh, contained uh, the main principles of the state governance. Uh, the the, the Orlik Constitution was the first in the world to establish separation of government powers into our modern three branches, legislative, executive, and Juridical. Judicial. The council was the legislative body. The headman was obliged to agree all important state matters with the council in advance. The court was also to function independently, and the headman was specially prohibited from personally making decisions. The general court was required to base its decision on the law. The document determined the territory of Ukraine, the rights of all groups of Ukrainian population, and independent position of Zaporizhka siege. The distinctive feature of the Orlais Constitution is uh, that it points out the limiting of Hetman's power in favor of the council, a kind of Cossack parliament. There was also made provision for local self-government on the basis of international Magdeburg law. This fact makes the Constitution one of the most democratic among all other state decrees of those days. Above all, uh, this document emphasizes the principle of freeing Ukraine from foreign domination which in modern usage is the principle of independence or state sovereignty. Its main idea is complete independence of Ukraine. The Constitution opened with this solemn declaration, Ukraine in both sides of the Dnipro River must remain from free from foreign domination 
for all time to come. It's important peculiarity distinguishing Orlick's constitution from ordinary Hetman's articles and making it similar to the subsequent European constitution is that it was signed not between Hetman and sovereign like protector or uh, protector of Ukrainian state, but between Hetman and Cossacks acting on behalf of Ukrainian people. Aujourd'hui, <coughs> nous pouvons affirmer que les idées annoncées dans la constitution, dans la constitution de Polipolik ont précédé le principe de la révolution française de 1921. Il correspondait et était parfois antérieur aux notions des droits naturels de la nation à une existence indépendante dans les conditions d'égalité au sein des autres nations du monde et à la notion des droits des peuples à modifier ou révoquer le gouvernement, même à reverser un gouvernement qui imposait à la nation un despotisme absolu, matérialisé après dans la déclaration américaine. On the other hand, the Constitution of Polish of 1710 was written under the influence of the Western European idea of parliamentarianism, which established the beginning of republican and parliamentary forms of government in the state structures of Hetman uh, of Ukraine uh, for in advance of the way of bourgeois democratic revolutions in Europe. The Ukrainian constitution was recognized by the governments of Sweden and Turkey immediately after, upon its adoption. Even today, it amazes by, by its relevancy and the high legal level. Scientists and politicians now substantially consider that having entitled the ideas of his inspirer, Ivan Mazepa, public constitution as the state legislation of republic direction, 80 years passed ahead of the 18th century French Revolution ideas. Thus, the Ukrainian Constitution of 1710 preceded those of the United States 1787, France 1791, and Poland 1791 as well. La Constitution de Palais Public n'est jamais entrée en vigueur parce qu'elle c'est rédigé à l'étranger, ces rédacteurs ne pouvaient pas revenir dans le pays. Mais elle s'est conservée dans l'histoire comme un monument, un monument juridique original qui a fondé la possibilité d'existence de la République parlementaire démocratique pour la première fois en Europe. Having benefited from the Polyporlic Constitution of 1710, Ukrainians were found to be democratically minded. In 1996, Ukraine adopted a democratic constitution of the independent Ukraine state. As Ukrainians throughout the world approach the 20th anniversary of national independence in 2011, it's fitting that we pay homage to the great historical leaders who 300 years ago had the vision and courage to fight for the right to live free. And the seeds of a democratic nation ruled by the constitution, those seeds sown 300 years ago are bearing fruit on the Ukrainian fertile land. It is interesting, the fact that the part of uh, his life, Hetman Polipovic, lived in France, as Peter mentioned. Peter can mention already. His son, Rehori Orlik, was a well-known lieutenant general in French army, and a small town, town of Orly near Paris, as well as the Aéroport de Paris Orly, uh, were allegedly named after them. Now I would like to invite Mr. William Young, Parliamentary Librarian. Today, we would like to present to the Parliamentary Library 
a copy of the Constitution of the Republic written in Latin and in its translation in English, French, and Ukrainian. The Constitution of the Republic is only being prepared for publishing this year on the occasion of its 300th anniversary, but we made an exclusive edition especially for this event. We also like to present the Diariusz Podróżny of the Republic published in Harvard University Press. The diary encompasses the dramatic years 1727-1731 on the Ukrainian headman in exile tried to influence on his behalf the European powers uh, whose representatives were gathered at the Diplomatic Congress of Soissons. May uh, these books with uh, the Peresopnitsa Gospel, uh, Peresopnitsky Evangelia, which already took pride of place at the Parliamentary Library, become a source of political and legal source to many representatives of uh, the Canadian state. Mr. Young.